Welcome, good evening and good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to Unapologetically Speaking with Dr. Candace Lane, AKA Dr. C. Thank you for being here. I would like to thank the ones that liked and subscribed and that continue to rock with me. Thank you so much. And thank you for the ones that if you're new watching me, thank you as well. Tonight, I would like to get into the content and I would like to talk about something that comes to me a lot. I get this a lot with my clientele and that is self acceptance when I say I get this a lot, I have to help my clients with self-acceptance. And this is maybe 90% of them. And it's not their fault. So I'm not here saying anything like that. I'm just saying that I would like to bring to you some of the ideas and different tips that I've given to my clients about self-acceptance. Because self-acceptance, will it goes hand in hand with self-esteem. Two different things, but it goes hand in hand with self-esteem. You have to accept yourself in order for others to accept you on a healthy level because people can accept you but they can accept you like you accept you and if you don't accept you then girl that ain't healthy so that's what we're going to get into today so the first one I would like to talk about number one is our parents now my mom did the best she could with me my mom my beautiful parents they she did the best she could with me and I think she did a great job could she have done better hell yeah we all could have I'm a mom of four and I could have done and I you know better with my children and I have a 10 year old that I'm raising as well and I could do better with him but whatever He's great. He's a great kid. But we all could do better. You know, children do not come with any type of instructions. However, some of us we're not as lucky as others. Some of us just have shit ass parents. This is unapologetically speaking, and I'm going to call it what it is. If you're sensitive to this uh, conversation and this content, you may want to turn this off because I keep it real and a little bit of raw here because this is what's you need to say. I'm just saying what everybody is thinking and they just don't have the balls to tell you. And some of us got shit ass parents. Some of us didn't get the hugs. And as children, we need that. I hug my kids all the time. And sometimes I'm like, okay, I can't breathe. Get off me. They tell you. But you know, some of us didn't get the hugs and the little kisses and the little I love you and you can do it and you're this and you're that and you're all of that. A lot of us didn't get that. Some of us, God, you could do better. Why you can't be like your sister? Why you doing this? And nitpicked everything that we do. A lot of us did that. A lot of us got put down a lot and name calling and different stuff. You know, I've been through it. I know. A lot of us was treated a certain way. And as adults, we look back and we like, hey, that shit was wrong. And that is sometimes and could be the reason why you don't accept you now. Because you were not accepted as a child. And it just elevated into adulthood. And now you're like, well, why should I accept me? I've never been accepted. I've never been told I do well. I've never been told I did that right. I've never been told I was great. I was this. I was that. I was pretty. I was loved. I can do anything. I could grow up to be this. I can do this. I can do. I was never told those positive things about myself as a child. So I don't feel that way about me now. So I come to you today to tell you if you had parents like that, then it ain't your fault. It's a generational thing that you went through and it's probably something that your parents went through as well because no better do better. So they probably went through it as well. So you got the backhand of it. So that's something you may want to fix and get with someone. Maybe it's a therapist, a coach, or counsel, whatever you need to do in order to fix that. Because if you were to start working on that, that issue that you had to battle as a child, you continue to work on it now. It will help with your self-acceptance and your self-esteem it will start to elevate just like it was elevating in the negative it will start to elevate in the positive so that is number one parenting so if you think you had to battle that it's not your fault so get you some help with that there are resources I'm going to need you to be resourceful and get you some help check on you number two 
Know your own strength. A lot of us battle with low self-acceptance because we don't know our own strength. You are stronger than you think you are. And you are strong in many things. However, when you have low self-acceptance about you, you have so much self-doubt, it outweighs the self-acceptance because self-doubt is here and your self-acceptance is here. You don't know your strength, so we got to change that. So that is number two. Again, there are resources and I'm going to need you to be resourceful so we can switch that balance, okay? You need to know your strength. Your self-doubt, again, is here, self-doubt within self. So your self-acceptance and how you feel about you is here, okay? Number three, forgive yourself. Yes, I know it sounds easy. I just roll that off the tongue. Forgive yourself. However, it's a little challenging to do, especially when you are a woman or man, if you're watching a broadcast, of a certain age. You have been battling with this anger, guilt, shame, hurt, pity for so many years. You do not know how to forgive yourself. That you will have to learn as well. And there are different techniques and coping skills and everything that you can learn in order to forgive yourself. Because a lot of the shit you got going on up here, I done told y'all on Unapologetically Speaking before, you cannot believe half of that. And then half of that come and stems from your childhood. So a lot of this shit ain't your fault. However, I do want you to take accountability for some of it. So you need to learn how to forgive yourself. We all fall. Get up. Everyone, even therapists, people think, oh my God, she's a therapist. She must have this perfect life. Girl, let me tell you something. My life has been a whirlwind of everything from emotional to roller coaster to ups and downs, around a damn circle, a 180 to a 360. I just happen to have a bag of tools and I know how to pull them out and check myself and fix what I need to fix. And I also get help. I don't do it by myself. Just like you need to get a coach, a therapist, a counselor. I have those things as well. I have a therapist. I have a mentor. I have coaches. I have people in my life. I have an amazing support system. Again, there are resources. You need to be resourceful. And start by forgiving yourself. You have to forgive you in order to conquer what's going on inside. You cannot be mad and walking around with you. Girl, that's like walking around with the enemy. We can't do that. We got to put that to rest. So that is number three. Number four, stop the negative self-talk. Once you stop the negative self-talk, your self-acceptance will rise again. That has a lot to do with the low self-acceptance as well because you got ne negative Nancy over here on his shoulder telling you what you can, can, and can, and cannot do. Negative Nancy. You got to shut her down. Then you got positive Pat over here saying, timid, saying, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think we can do it. Her voice isn't strong enough. So what I'm going to need for you to do is build up and boss up Po um, positive pat over here on this shoulder boss her up and build her up and I know you ladies are strong and you're going to have to shut down negative Nancy and stop the negative self talk and the number one tip of how you stop the negative self talk where's your proof I say that to every client where's your proof when they're like well I feel this and I feel this about myself where's the damn proof in that and then after we go over that they're like there is no proof I don't know why I feel that way and it could be number one, parenting. Your parents brought you up a certain way and you are so used to bashing you or getting bashed, I'm sorry, you decide to keep up that momentum and you continue to bash you. It can come from that as well. However, we're going to have to put that to sleep. And that's when your accountability needs to come in. You're going to have to put negative Nancy, put her ass to rest. Yeah, we got to do that. Again, you need help with that because I used to battle with that and I had to go get me some help. That was many, many moons ago, honey. I had negative Nancy over here all in here and I wouldn't be sitting where I am if I didn't get rid of her ass. Okay, so I'm going to need you to be resourceful and find you someone that you can talk to to get rid of her ass. Okay, so number five, be real. Be authentically you. If you were to do the first four steps that I have mentioned 
that will come a little easy to you. And that self-acceptance will shine like the sun outside. You have to be real with you. Sometimes we do put on the mask to get through our daily life activities. I get it. I've been there. But some of you ladies wear the mask all day. That shit has just came. That, that, that's with every outfit. We can't do that. People respect you more when you are real and authentic. What you see on, on Apologetically Speaking, the ones that know me, know me. This is it. This is Dr. C. What you see is what you get. I don't put on airs and I don't sugarcoat shit. I don't work in a bakery. What you see is what you get. I am not for the faint at heart. If you come on here and you about to clench your pearls and you like, oh my God, oh, you may, you may want to scroll past this broadcast because I tell it. Real. People respect me more because I'm going to give it to you. Straight, no fucking chaser. That's how it is. Some of us need that. That's why some of you, and I'm talking to y'all out there in YouTube land, out there walking on damn eggshells in your own damn house. Out there uh, scratching where you don't itch and laughing when shit ain't funny. No. Learn how to be like Texas and stand your ground. I ain't trying to have, tell you to have a bitch effect. What I'm trying to tell you to do is love on you. And let your no be your no, your yes be your yes be kind. You can be kind to everyone else, but when it come to you, you can't. That's when you put on the mask. And you're like, well, and you got all these prereqs about what you need to do. Get out the perfect syndrome. That's what I call it. Trying to be perfect. I want to start this. I want to do that. But you can't start till you're perfect. Be real with yourself. Girl, shit ain't going to be perfect. My broadcast ain't perfect. I don't care. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm here to help. I'm here to elevate. I'm here to inspire. I'm here to empower. That's perfect all by itself. But this right here don't have to be. But what I bring is real. I need you to learn how to take the mask off. And if you start every day, small, you'll learn how to leave it where it needs to be. And pick it up when you need to, because sometimes we have to, okay? So you can keep her on the dresser. But I'm going to need you to be real with yourself. I need you to be real there first, with yourself, authentic. And then the self-acceptance, like I said in the beginning, it will start shining like the sun outside. So, that is that uh, number five. Number six is to recognize your strength. Uh, I need you to recognize your strength and recognize your self-worth. Your worth. Your strength and your worth go hand to hand. And a lot of you think you are not worthy. You are. All of you. All of you. Not one chick is worth more than another, honey. All of us. You're worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. And I need you to know that. And as soon as you start to Say it, believe it, know it, learn it. Your self-acceptance and self-worth will elevate. So work on that. Again, there are resources. I need you to be resourceful. Check on you. You are worth it. The last one is to forgive others. The reason why I state forgive others, because you cannot walk around. You got enough. You got enough shit going on. Especially if you on here listening to me. You got enough shit going on. In order to forgive others, it's taking weight off you. Forgiveness is for self. I didn't ask you to forgive Bob, Joe, Sally, Jennifer, Susan, Keisha, and the rest of them. So let them back all in your good graces. And, and they, they I'll make your self-esteem even wallow and go further down. I need you to forgive for yourself. Forgiveness is for you. Girl, you can silently forgive. That's like making moves in silence. But you got to let go the hurt, the pain, the shame, the anger. You can't walk around with that. It's not healthy. It is start affecting your inside. It will start affect, affecting how you feel about you. I'm pretty sure it is. And then it will start affecting your sleep, your health, your weight, your skin, your hair. Everything will start falling out. It will just be a mess. So you have to learn how to forgive others. You do not need to walk around with that heavy weight. You got enough. So take that weight off you tonight. If you got something heavy on your heart and you angry and you mad at someone, I am asking you to pray about it, be about it, and set it down for you. 
if you would like to forgive them and let them back into your lane and to you and to your whole situation, that's up to you. I don't know your situation, but if you need to forgive they don't have to know, honey. You ain't got to be forgiving folks and calling them. I didn't say forgive and send a text. I said forgive for you. That is imperative. So that is what I have for you tonight. Those tips that I just gave will help you with your self-acceptance and your self-esteem will follow. But in order to have self-acceptance, ladies, you got to have self-esteem behind it but you can't get one without the other and the other oh it's just a mess but we're going to start with self-acceptance first and self-esteem will follow so i'm going to leave you with this be kind to you watch the words that you say to you because how you treat you others will treat you you plant those seeds if you're going around saying i'm this i'm that i messed up i'm not this type of person i'm this i'm stupid i'm fat i'm and you're just so negative remember we talked about the negative self-talk others hear you and you are planting those seeds and when you plant you do know shit grow come on now we all know that sometimes you ain't got to plant but once some weeds grow up, you ain't even planning nothing over there. You see what I'm saying? So you have to watch what you say about you and watch how you treat you. Because how you treat you, others will treat you. You are the first representation on how you should be cared for. So learn how to care for you. Okay? Again, this is Unapologetically Speaking with Dr. C. Please like and subscribe. Any comments, questions, or concerns, please, I welcome them all. I am here for you as you are here for me. Again, this is Unapologetically Speaking. Have a good night.